You finally did it. After all these decades, you went out and got the computer of your childhood again. Now you have a Commodore 64 and an original 1541 floppy drive, but you don't have any software on floppy. You want to use the original floppy drives with floppy disk for the nostalgia. You can download games and other software on disk images, but how to get that the easiest way onto a real floppy? You also want to do this process as much as you can on the real 64. For now, you're fine downloading on a PC or other device, but you want to do the right back and everything else on the 64. Well, adding one piece of hardware to the mix is pretty easy, and I'll show you. After downloading whatever software you want to use, you can use the 64 to write those disk images back to real floppy disk. Down the road, I might make a video how you can eliminate the PC altogether and download directly on the 64, but for now, let's keep this simple. Back in the 90s, you could use what was called an X1541 cable or derivative to hook to a parallel port on a PC of the MS-DOS to Windows 95 or 90, 98 era and use a program called Star Commander. You could write back D64 images and it actually worked pretty good. Later on, as parallel ports were no longer becoming, no longer coming standard on a PC, a new device called the Zoom Floppy, or similar, was available. This connected to the PC with a USB cable, but there was a little bit more degree of difficulty setting up with drivers and having to deal with Windows. Once it's set up, it works really good, but the setup can be a little daunting for people who are a bit novice. This extremely short history lesson is just to explain that there are other methods, and there have always been other methods, to write out real Commodore floppies. But this video is meant to be as simple as possible and to do the process almost entirely on a real 64. The piece of hardware I'm going to recommend you purchase is called an SD2IEC. It is also sometimes called a UIEC. There are many different people making different versions of this. Operability is usually pretty identical. It's just the quality of the build and the features that will set them apart. This one you see here is really pretty basic. It works pretty good for simple tasks. It does have some shortcomings. This one is hardwired for device number 8 only. It is nice that it gets power from the user port, but this short tail also can create problems. For this video, I am not going to recommend you get one that you cannot switch off device 8. The original 1541 floppy drive from factory is hardwired for 8, and there's no dip switches to change that. If you just bought a second-hand used 1541 drive, chances are it's not been modified to select any other device number. So, if you're going to be on the market, I do not recommend one that you cannot switch the device number. There are many options out in the market, and this video really can't get into every single option out there. If you have questions, ask down in the comments section. I personally really love this model. The only issue possibly for a novice with this model is it didn't come with a power supply. I had to find my own AC adapter, chop these wires, put them into that terminal, which is easy for me, but that might be frightening for some people. Just do your research. Just get a model that has options to change the device number. That's all I recommend. If you find one, you have questions, ask down in the comments section. I can answer, and I'm sure plenty other in this community can answer. But to do this, yes, go ahead and get an SD2 IEC device. One with some features, and definitely that can change device number off 8 to, say, 9, 10, or 11. Now, what software are we going to use? The program we're going to use today is D64IT. This is a pretty old school program. If memory serves me right, this was the first program to write a D64 
back to a real floppy from an actual Commodore 64. There may be something earlier that I don't remember. If you're old school like me and you do remember a program earlier than this, then let me know down in the comments section. I am picking this program because it is pretty dead easy to use, even for the novice. You also do not need any fancy devices. As long as you have an SD2 IEC, you can do what I'm showing you. You do not need anything else except your 64, your floppy drive, and then the SD2 IEC. Now you can download it here, or you can go over to Commodore Scene Database and download it here. So I'm going to download it from here. But first, I need to put in my SD card. And let's download. Now obviously we're going to want something to write back. The emulation image for a 1541 drive is a D64 image. There are plenty of games to find out there. Commodore Scene Database is just one of those, but we'll use that and we'll download a game here. Let's download Potty Pigeon, an old classic. Okay, those are downloaded. This is in zip format, which we do not want. We could unzip. I recently did a demonstration showing how to unzip. You'll see our card on the screen, but for this video, it's irrelevant for this video, so let's just extract here. And for house cleaning, we can get rid of this zip file. And also for house cleaning, let's make these names something a little bit more Commodore friendly. These upper cases are not Commodore friendly here, so let's rename this. Let's just give it d64it.prg. We don't even need that PRG, so. Yeah, let's get rid of that PRG. And we don't need this long name of Potty Pitch. And let's just give it something simple. Like Potty D64. Alright, eject and go over to the Commodore. Here's our setup for this demonstration. We have a stock NTSC 64. And we have a 1541, which has a lot going on in it, but it's set for completely stock. One of these days I'll probably do a video about all that's going on with this drive. It, it, there's quite a bit. But all you need to know for here is set completely as a stock. It's set as device number 8. We have no accelerator, no other expansions. The only thing we have on top of the stock system, as mentioned, is an SD2 IEC, which is set at device number 9. So 1541 is set as device 8, SD2 IEC is set at device 9. The SD card we just put that program on and the D64 is in. So, let's get to work. Let's get a directory from the SD2 IEC, which is set at device Okay, there's our D64 IT program, which we're about to run. And make note right now of the D64 name of whatever you want to write back. Here it's potty.d64. It would be helpful to load it off the right device. There's no Jiffy DOS here. There's no device here to speed up drive times. This is stock for this demonstration. All right, before we forget, let's put a floppy disk in our 1541. All right, in this program, let's go ahead and check here. The 1541 device is device 8. Yes, that's correct. This physical device is device 8. The D64 device, that's where the D64 is residing, 
is on the FD to IEC on 9. So that is correct. D64 name is not this default. We need to change that. So let's hit F5 and put the name of the D64 you want to write back here. It's potty.d64. Now, mode's important. This is correct. We're taking a D64 and writing it back to a 1541 disk. That is correct. You can do the reverse and take a real physical floppy and create a D64 out of it. It's kind of out of the scope of this, but I guess I'll show it at the end. So now just double check. Everything looks good. F8 to D6, D64 it. So F8 to right back to a real floppy. In case you didn't know, F8 is Shift F7. This is going to take quite a while, so I'll see you back in a bit. Alright, it's all done. I didn't time it, but it took probably somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes. Certainly not the fastest way, but it's got to be the dead easiest way. Even if you've never touched a Commodore before, you could probably just do what I just did. Anyhow, let's try out the game, loading from the real floppy. Let's hook up a joystick and try it out. Let's get a directory. And let's load that first program. Let's give it a run. And it works! Now you can play this old classic. Pretty good, pretty good. Now let's say we want to do that process in reverse. Get a friend online that needs a utility disc. Something like this. How can you take a real floppy and make a D64 image from your real Commodore 64 and 1541. Process is just about as easy. Okay, reminder, we still have the physical floppy drive as device 8 and the SD2 IEC as device 9. Get in the directory again. So, I'm going to reload this D64 it. While that's loading, go ahead and take the floppy you want to image and put into your 1541. Okay, so our physical device is 8, that is correct. Our D64 device is 9, the SD2 IC, that is correct. The D64 name, we need to name it something. It's going to create a new D64 image. So let's hit F5, and let's call this hdutils.d64. And now here's crucial. The mode, we're no longer taking a D64 image and writing to a real 1541 disk. We're reversing that. We're taking a real 1541 floppy and creating a D64 disk image. So we need to hit F6. And this is crucial because if you don't have write protect, if you don't have write protect on the tabs and you do that the wrong way, you're going to write over whatever good flop you had and you're going to be infuriated. Lots of crying and gnashing teeth. So make sure every time before you do this that you have this correct. And we do have it correct now. So we're going to hit F8 to D64 it. And again, this will be a long process, so I'll see you when it gets to the end.
and it is done. Okay, we can quit. All right, let's take a look at the directory on that SD card. Let's see the directory. And there it is. That disk image cap captured everything. Now we can move that over to the PC and we can uh, email that D64 to anybody. We can upload it somewhere or use it in an emulator. I hope this video was able to show that it is a dead easy method to write back D64 images to a real floppy disk. I specifically chose this method not because it's the most powerful. It's because it's the easiest and most accessible. If someone was a casual user for a year or so in the 80s, and they felt nostalgic and came back. There shouldn't be a really big bar for entry to start writing disk back and using. Hopefully some people will find this and be able to write disk back and start playing with their Commodore again. There are other methods out there. Certainly one's more powerful and faster than this. May cover some of that in the future. Even with this method, if I was to turn on Jiffy DOS on the drive and use something like a super CPU, which has Jiffy DOS for the computer. I have Jiffy DOS on the computer, but certainly uh, an accelerator like a super CPU would cut down that speed quite a bit. D64, it was never really optimized. And even for a 64, there's other programs that can write back that are more optimized, but it's a little bit more of a learning curve. So again, this one was just to be as dead easy as possible. And I hope I achieved that and thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share this to somebody who might need it. Again, thank you, and I'll see you on the next video.